So I bought a couple of things recently that gave me a good opportunity to do this video and do it super simple the way that I wanted to do it. It's hard to impossible when I'm actually installing things to go over the details or to like do a good close up of what I'm doing because usually I just got to get it done. Excuse the plane. I can't do anything about it. I only got a little bit of time to shoot this and I really really want to shoot this uh, before I kind of start making moves to kind of start using some of this stuff for real. Now I got this 20 watt um, solar panel from Bouge RV which I uh, unboxed in another video and I hooked directly to the battery. You should never do that. <laughs> Among other things, it didn't actually tell me if the battery was actually charging as, as the sun has probably gone away. I'm still not going to get that opportunity, but I've already tested it with this solar controller and disconnected everything. This solar charge controller cost me about 40 bucks. The reason why I got this one is because it can do lithium. Now there are two types of charge controllers and you will hear over and over again what you should go for is MPPT. Um, maximum Power Point Tracking I think is what it stands for. If not, I'll correct myself in a note. Um, but this is not an MPPT charge controller. This is one of the ones that sometimes they try to fake you out with on eBay sometimes. But this is PWM. The only reason I got this one, though, is because it does have a setting for lithium batteries. And that's something you have to be careful of if you decide to go with lithium batteries. A lot of the cheaper ones can only handle the variations of... Uh, lead acid and there are variations on red lead acid you can have flooded you can have sealed even gel is actually a variation on lead acid even though sometimes it's treated as another option outside of lead acid and lithium um so i do have one little 12 volt 24 amp hour um life po 4 battery as I explained in another video, what I'm planning to do with this battery is make it a house battery that's responsible for the lights and the fans. I'm not sure about the fridge yet. It depends on sort of how much I'm task taxing this little battery. The Jackery may stay in charge of the uh, fridges. <laughs> I'll see, I haven't yet decided. But the reason why I, I really just got this battery because I thought it would be nice if there was a battery that was charging when the car was running and charging off of a trickle charge that's just making sure I, my lights and my fan work in all situations and then I can just let the jackeries be something that kind of float around for like things I want to use kitchen items household items laptops uh, charging cell phones and that and this is just something that's kind of a part of the house that makes sure the very basic functions of the house work I'll probably even try to put the water pump on this because I do plan to install a water pump an electric water pump which I already have from a sink I previously had and then stopped having <laughs> um, in a camper van so that's the plan uh, the basic house stuff will be wired up to this battery eventually but until then it's a really cool battery to just test stuff on and it was a good opportunity to use this little tiny panel it's only 20 watts it's not going to do much and i don't see this as part of a permanent installation this i'm probably going to keep i don't really need a sophisticated charge controller for what i'm doing if you are getting something for a house system you're going to want something better than this like i said this costs about 40 bucks and it is pulse with modulation pwm um so yeah i might put up some some information at the end about that but i really want to talk about because this came up in a bunch of videos what you get with a kit now normally what you get with a kit is a solar charge controller a solar panel and maybe maybe you'll get some wires the kit that i bought a long time ago when i was building my minivan um had a solar panel no inverter there was a kit with an inverter it cost a little bit more i do have a little tiny 100 watt inverter here just to talk about them um but it, it's going to be a weird thing the way i talk about it um, but let's cover what you get in the kit so what do you do with what you get in the kit well first of all i want to make sure you see stuff so that we're going to change angles and then we're going to chat through this what i do like about this though is it does have usb ports um so yeah i'm going to take this little cover off and let's talk about charge controllers but before we dive any deeper on solar i'd like to thank this video sponsor jackery if you just don't want to deal with solar if you don't want to deal with putting together your own system there is an option that lets you do that and that's jackery jackery is an all-in-one system that already contains 
all of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in this video. Not only is it a battery, both of these have batteries in them, but they also have everything you need to take power out of the battery or pop, put power into the battery. If I want to plug stuff in, I take this out the box, I hit this button right here, I plug stuff in, boom, plugged in. If I want to charge my cell phone, like I'm doing right here, I just plug my cell phone, in, phone into here, turn on the on button, boom, charging my cell phone. And if this power starts getting low and I want to charge it, I just take my solar panel and I plug it into here. Boom, I'm charging the system. This makes it super, super easy to have power for your off-grid activities. So if you want to skip all the hoo-ha of putting together a system, especially a really big system, because I'm going to be showing you a fairly tiny one today, this is your ticket. So if you are interested in all-in-one power stations, check out the Jackery. And I think it's good to have this in addition to a house system. Thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video. So on most charge controllers, you're going to have clearly marked negative and positive areas. Right here is what's called a load. So usually you'd want to load something really, really light right here if you use it at all. In most cases, people don't use this. They will run lights off their fuse box or something like that. I had one charge controller where I use load. I've mostly ignored it since then. Uh, this is only for very, very, very light loads. You don't want to like wire your inverter to this. That would be bad. Um, in most cases just ignore it and you will have other options for turning on and off lights now on this particular charge controller these USB ports only work if load is activated on the controller which I discovered today I wasn't really sure if they would work with the on or off most charge controllers are not going to come with the USB ports for what I'm doing it kind of works but in most cases you're just going to create all that stuff without the charge controller. So those things are weird about this charge controller. Now what is also there, there's always a load usually, but the most important one is battery, which either has the word bat, it has a battery symbol or whatever, and you're going to have your positive and negative clearly marked. Every charge controller I've owned has had some variation of this is clearly where you hook your battery. Then over here is a solar panel. It might have a solar panel. It might have PV. PV V is it means solar we can get into the actual details at, at a later date and again it has a clearly marked positive and negative in this case there is a plus and a minus but there's also colors um, so they're trying to make it really really easy for you to hook this up now the first thing you want to hook up is the battery the battery is going to power this you want to do the battery before you add the solar now this one came with a little cover there are different variations of this where your area might be covered or it might not, but you're always basically going to have to loosen some screws and tighten them down, and you're going to be sticking bare wire in here. Let me make sure all mines are up. And nice and clear for wire. Yep. All right. So much like your solar charge controller, usually this one has a battery capacity monitor that is very unusual. Whoever built this cell, that's just how they design them. Um, I haven't opened this up to confirm if there actually is some sort of charge controller in there, and it's irrelevant because I'm going to use an exterior controller for what I'm doing. My name is not Will Prouse. Um, so again... It, Either you'll see a plus and a minus, a red and a black, or both. In this case, I have both. So I'm very clear on this is the plus, this is the positive, this is the negative. So what I'm going to do with my charge controller is I am just going to follow the instructions. All right, so my wire has a bare wire end, which I've already prepped to go into the charge controller, and the red and the black. And this is just some wire hat left over. Now on your positive line, sometimes it's good to have a fuse. This is a pre-fuse cable. I'm honestly just using it. You do not have to use an inline fuse. There are all kind of fuses out there. There's switch fuses, there's A&L fuses. Um, having some sort of fuse protection on your line and how big you want that fuse protection to be will vary by the size of your battery, the size of your solar array, and the size of the system that you're building. This one's super simple. So I'm using a lot of basic cables. Also, 
the gauge of your wire should be determined by the size of your system. That is a whole bunch of math and, and information and, and I am not going to go into it. This will be fine for what I'm doing because what I'm doing is super simple. Um, a lot of times if you have bare wire, you will have to add your own ring connectors, but to hook it up, you're going to need one side to have ring connectors. Sorry about the focus. You're going to have one side to have ring connectors and one side to have bare, bare wire. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the charge controller. Now this is the part I'm unsure of and I'm going to be honest about it. I have always heard do the positive first and the negative last and then revert it, reverse it um, on the way out. So far, nothing's blown up and I just kind of go with that rule. All right, that's in there nice and tight. And you want to pull on this and make sure it's not coming out. I remember on one of my charge controllers, I didn't have it in there good and it stopped charging and that's because one of the wires had fell out. It had enough of a connection to run for a while and then later on, it did not. Also, these holes are so much bigger than the wire I'm using, but you wanna make sure in that case that your plastic's not going up in there and that everything is just connecting with the bare wire. I can pull on this, it's not going anywhere. So my red and black are hooked up. Now I need to do the same thing with the battery. As you can see, there is nothing on the screen. And there goes my negative. And as you can see, the screen has started displaying information now that we are connected to the battery. So people have asked me, what's the difference between getting a battery and getting like a Jackery or something like that? A battery is just a battery. But this charge controller, while it's also being powered by the battery, also takes information from your solar panel and then digest it and delivers it to your battery in a way that controls the charge. In an ideal situation, it's protecting you from overcharging, it's changing, you know, the, the how much power is coming in. Like you might be getting an excess of power and all you need to do is top off this battery. Well, in an ideal world, the charge controller is going to make sure that's all that's happening, that it's not overcharging, that extra power isn't going into this battery. That is what this charge controller is regulating. So now we have the basic setup for just reading the battery, to be honest. We aren't sending power in. We're only taking a little bit of power out to power the charge controller, but not much, not as much as actually running a real load. So the next thing we want to do is at least get power going into the battery. And to do that, we need to do a negative and positive that's running between the solar panel and the charge controller. Under normal circumstances, understand that you would have a red and black cable that was coming from your solar panel into your charge controller. I have set up a little quick disconnect for this, but this has nothing to do with charging a larger solar system. Look how tiny my wires are. If you're installing a big solar system like on your roof, your wires will never be this tiny. Now for my information, I've marked this one as positive so that I know it's positive because things can get inverted on this on these little SAE connectors you'll see these a lot in um, battery chargers um, but it's really convenient for the setup so I'm using well also this solar panel came came with a SAE connection so I just took a pair of wires that were also SAE marked what the positive run was from here but under normal circumstances, you would have a red wire running from your solar panel and a black wire running from your solar panel that would be your negative and positive. And then all you have to do is match that to here, just like you did with the battery. And so you put your positive in. From the solar panel. And then you have your negative.
Now you don't want to over tighten you just want to make sure you have a firm grip between the cables and the um, charge controller. You do want to yank on them a little bit. You don't want like a little bit of wire hanging out. The wire should be fully in the box but none of the plastic. And when you pull on these they should be pretty firmly attached. Actually my positive isn't very good so I'm going to go ahead and reset that. All right, I don't know if we're getting any power right now. It looks like we're getting nothing. Yeah, it's way too late to get power. But you'd be able to look at your charge controller and see if it's charging or not. Now, if you were ever needed to change anything about this, what you want to make sure you do is um, disconnect from your power source first. I'm not really getting anything as a load. And for the purposes of that this video, that's okay. But I do want to show battery type I reset to LifePo. When I got this, it was set to sealed. Now, in my case, every time I've plugged, unplugged it and plugged it back up, it's always gone back to LifePo, which is what I want. But if you do have a charge controller that seems to default to sealed, you always want to go back and check that the battery chem chemistry on your charge controller matches the battery chemistry on your battery if you have those options and it's probably the only thing you're going to change there's a bunch of other settings in here you could change that i'm not even going to get into right now and with the more complex ones there's certainly a lot more settings you can change as you learn more about solar but you can know nothing about those settings and do this setup and this is enough to get power into your battery you have a solar panel positive and negative into the charge controller you have a battery positive and negative into the charge controller and this is basically the middleman between that and here now you can take power out of your battery with this as i indicated these are connected to your load these are very unusual but you also just have a load area down here and a mistake a lot of people make is they will hook inverters to this and that is wrong for your inverter you want to just come off the battery now another thing you may want is a fuse block. Why would you want a fuse block? Well, if you want to run lights, if you want to uh, maybe your fans, you're probably going to want them to run them to some sort of fuse block situation. Um, you can also just get a wire that's fused and run it directly to the battery, but this usually keeps things nice and neat. I'm going to take the cover off. Now these are a bunch of fuses, They're, it's very common that these fuse boxes come with a bunch of fuses that are different sizes. You really really need to look at your items to decide what size fuse you need. I'm going to take a very small one. And you can put these in after you connect it to your uh, charge controller. Now these fuses are just, once you're hooked up, which this one is not, you're just gonna slide your fuse into place. This one is a 15. Usually the colors are consistent, so once you get used to it, you'll know what fuse you're grabbing just by the color, but they usually also have a number on the front. Now almost everything you're gonna hook to this fuse box is gonna have its own positive and negative. So this right here has a positive and a negative sorry it was off camera for a second and so if I was gonna hook this which just happens to be a socket and we're gonna use it another way which is why I'm not gonna hook it up you would unscrew this and you just put your positive here and then you pick a negative at top and you unscrew that and you hook your negative into there and then you have an active socket that you can use for whatever you want it would be the same thing with lights it would be the same thing with your fan or anything like that you could actually just take the wire ends of your fan and do a negative and positive or you could put like an unpluggable socket on the end add one of these to your fuse box and then just plug your fan into your socket and you can have as many of these sockets as you want if you want it if it's something that's never going to move it's probably better just to put a couple of crimp cables directly to the fuse box but if it's something you think you might unplug and move around or want options for then you might want to add a socket to your fuse box and then just put add this to the fuse box and plug things in and unplug things as you need it this fuse box is not attached to anything. I'm gonna pull this fuse out 
because this socket isn't live without a fuse in it so it's better to install this with no fuses in because that way nothing's live now you want this to actually function you need to hook it to power um in my case again i'm doing something unusual so the end of my fuse box is actually hooked to a socket there is no reason for you to ever do this your end would just be a positive and negative like this. Now, once again, I'm doing something for the purpose of being able to have a quick disconnect. So I'm gonna hook this directly to the battery. And that's gonna represent us hooking up the uh, fuse block. Now, again, you want to do this before you went live with power. I was just showing you that to show you the complete install of the solar system. But that's also why it's a good reason to have a quick disconnect for a situation like this. Because if I was getting any solar power, which I'm not right now, I could just quickly disconnect the SAE connection that I put on there. But you probably won't have to do this because you're not doing it as an instructional video. But let's say our solar panel wasn't hooked up. And like I said, I'm getting zero solar right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Do as I say, not as I do. I also put these little um these clips on here so that would they would be easier to put on so we're gonna slide this guy. all right so as you can see that line is live this is the line that is going to the fuse block so i could hook something to this fuse block a fridge light whatever and it's getting power from the battery which i can see because there's a light on the end of that i could also just directly use this socket that's hooked to the battery for whatever i want in this case i was using it for my fuse block <laughs> now i was going to use this in the jackery that's why i did my fuse block this way but i'm changing my mind about how i'm going to design my system and i'll take things apart later but all these parts are really helping me do this video now one thing i advise oh i'm dropping fuses is once you have your fuse block together is to label it a lot of times it'll come with these labels but i find labeling the actual um wires instead of the box is more helpful to me but usually they do include like a bunch of stickers for you including some blank ones now in addition to your fuse block you're probably going to want some type of inverter in my case i've unplugged the unplugged the fuse block but in a normal case you would leave it set up um, this is just a basic 100 watt inverter with a socket plug-in it's very very small and so like i really have and it has its own fuse protection so i have no problem just plugging this directly into the socket that is now active off of this battery um, if you have a large inverter you do not want to run it off of load on the charge controller, but you also probably don't want to run it off of this fuse block right here. What you're going to want to do is your inverter, usually on the back, you're going to be able to install a negative and po positive cable. And that negative and positive cable, just like here, would run to your battery in addition to the fuse block. Um, in some cases, you can find ways for positive lines and uh, common negatives to share lines to reduce some of your cables because after a while, these cables can start getting ridiculous and you don't want too many things running off of your studs. But this is basically what you're gonna do. For things where you wanna get power into the battery, you hook the positive and negative. For things where you wanna get power out of the battery, you know, and plug things in, you're gonna hook to positive and negative. And that's all there is to it. Everything else you will do to make a solar system builds off this basic, basic thing. And the only thing with getting power into the battery is you have a middleman called your solar charge controller. By the way, when you're done, you just cover it up like this and you put that on a wall somewhere where you can see it. I like having something with the screen. I went too high there, guys. But you just put it on a wall. You put your battery in a nice box and you hide all your cables. So guys, 
guys, I don't know if that was useful at all, but that uh, me playing, since I had this small battery and this small panel and this cute little, this thing feels like a toy. It's not a toy. It actually works. It's, um, I think it's a 30 amp. I knew it wasn't going to be for a big system, so I didn't feel like I needed to spend a lot of money for what I was trying to do with this battery. Um, but I was like, hey, this gives me a chance to try to do a really, really simple, 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 simple talk through of solar. Now, as I said, as you get into bigger batteries and more solar panels, it's really just a question of making sure your wires are big enough. You have fuses where you need to have fuses for protection. Um, and making sure you're buying the right size things. The actual hookup isn't really the big deal. It's making sure you have the right size wires, that you're adding in those fuse protections where you need them, uh, usually on the po positive line, um, and that you're protecting your system. Um, and the good thing about fuses is they'll blow usually before fire will start. <laughs> like I said, for very, very big inverters, you just want to make sure you're not running them off of things that can't handle the load and that's usually the problem when it comes to hooking up inverters to either the fuse block which is made for a lot of light loads or the uh load on the solar controller did i say that did i said it twice um i have seen the a common positive on here we're like uh the fuse block is either sharing the positive with the inverter or the inverter is sharing the positive with the fuse block, but I would consult an actual solar expert. I usually just like to run the fuse block and the inverter directly off the battery, and that's my three things. The solar panel coming from the solar charge controller, the fuse block for my light loads, and the inverter for my inverter loads. I don't plan to run an inverter off this at all. I really just pulled this out for demonstration because it was a very small 100 watt inverter that I had handy to talk about it. All right, guys, that's all for this video. Like I said, it was super simple. I don't know if it helped anybody, but since I had this little panel that's actually really useful for something like this, even though I waited till the sun was down, so it was almost not useful, um, I thought it might be a fun thing to do. All right, bye-bye. So no one video can ever really fully cover solar. Um, I did my best to just cover the basic parts. Like if you bought a kit and a battery, this is the basics you need to know to put a kit and a battery together. It is not a how-to list. This is not a do this list. It's a basics if you have a kit and a battery. If you have a panel, a battery, a charge controller, and go get a fuse block and an inverter, you could put this stuff together and have a very basic system. There is a lot more that could be covered but i really think those subjects are kind of intensive on their own such as wire gauges and i don't know um choosing the right fuse uh where you should fuse or could fuse um there's more complex solar controllers than the one that i have there are easier solar controllers than the one that i have but I tried to really touch on these are the basics that I've encountered while bu building my systems. Um, if you have any other questions, if you think there's anything I got wrong, if there's, think is there any if there's anything you think I should have mentioned, please put those in the comments. Again, I am not an electrician. Um, I'm just a person who's been fooling with this as a DIYer. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon and YouTube membership supporters. Thank you to everyone who watches videos from beginning to end, who watches a few ads to help me out. I really just can't thank you enough, and I will see you in the next video.